I remember on my 26th birthday, um, I was praying to God, but my name is Zoe. But I don't know, I know that the meaning of Zoe is the life of God, but I really don't know what it is. I don't have an understanding. My parents just told me it means the life of God, but I want to experience it. I want to have an understanding of what my name is. And I prayed to God. And I think sometime late last year, I got an understanding of what the name is. Like, like it just busted open. Like, it was like a new revelation. Like, I've never seen that in... I've never seen that kind of um, enlightenment. Like, my eyes... It's as though my eyes just got open to a new reality. And it made me realize the identity, the authority that I have because I am in Christ Jesus. And what I used that um, understanding to do, I began to walk in that reality. Every time I would declare to myself, I am the life of God. I am, I bear the life of God in me. Like anyone that comes, that's, I told God, I think, because of what you have shown me, I now walk in it. Like anyone that comes in contact with me, like they will not live the same way they came. Like even before I talk to them, like something will pass through me to them because I bear the life of God in me. Praise God. That's what Bethel does to us. You have a new identity. You put on a new identity. Jacob here, he was, after that encounter he had, his name changed to Israel. And today, we are calling on the God of Israel. We are calling on the God of Israel. And today, no nation, go and verify it, no nation can touch Israel because of the covenant God had with Jacob. Because of one single encounter at Bethel, everything changed. Praise God. I just want to tell you today, your identity is going to change. If you are here struggling with who you are, like you are confused about, okay, what, what am I on earth for? Like, this is the place. This is the right time. You have come at the right time. And I pray and I ask the Lord that. Is going to reveal who you are. You have an understanding of your place in Christ Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Do something new in our lives. Something new in our lives. Something new in our lives. Oh, Lord, do something new in our lives, something new in our lives, something new. One more time, one more time, something new, do something new in our lives. Something new, significant in our lives, Lord. Something new, do something new. Oh Lord, oh Lord, do something new. Something, something new in our lives. Something new. In our lives, oh Lord. Amen. Amen. The next um, benefit that we get from encounts um, from battle is is that a new level of blessings are unlocked for us. Why? Because of that obedience. Obedience to God unlocks a new level of blessing. We see in Genesis 35, verse 11, it says, And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. And today, that is the reality. Israel, no matter how you fight, 
that nation of Israel is still standing. Because look at it, it's here. God promised Jacob. He said, a nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. Because Jacob obeyed a new level of abundance found in God was unlocked. And generations after that, they don't even need to pray sometimes. They will still enjoy. They are covered in that, in that, under that promise that God has made. Because God is a man who do not lie. He does not lie. He does not lie. You do not lie. You do not fail. What is hard for you to do? It doesn't exist. Oh. It, it can, can never, never, ever exist. Oh. You do not lie. You do not lie. You do not fail. What is hard for you to do? It doesn't exist. Oh. It can never ever exist. Oh. Amen. Sorry. Um, another um benefit that we enjoy when we come to Bethel is that our fellowship with God, our relationship with God is deepened, is established on the firm foundation. We see in um, verse 13, he said, and God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, even a pillar of stone, and he poured a drink offering. In verse 15 it says, and Jacob called the name of the place where God spake with him, Bethel. Jacob now had an established place. It does not necessarily have to be like maybe the church building. Your heart can also be a place where you meet with God. In your closet, maybe at your workplace, like you find a spot where you, you say, this place is dedicated unto God because when I come to this place, I know that my answers, my prayers will be answered you have that assurance, you have that full confidence because you've already established that place that, God, as I'm coming to this place, I know I'm not living here the same way I came. I know that before I even open my mouth to pray, I will have my answer. God is calling you today. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to have a really, an intimate relationship with you. An intimate relationship with you. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, as we round up. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Um, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that he presents yourself, your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that he may prove what is that good and acceptable unto God. Um, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation, which says, it says, and so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice the kind that he will find acceptable. Because we see Cain and Abel, they both went to offer sacrifice unto God. That's what God said, offer unto me sacrifice. They both went, on to, they both went to offer sacrifice unto God. But God accepted Abel's sacrifice. Why? Because it was living. It was pure. 
it was holy unto God. That's the kind of sacrifice the Lord wants from us today. It says, this, this is truly the way to worship him. Verse 2 says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and please and perfect. Right now, I just want to, us to bow our heads. If you're here and you know within you, I'm not going to ask you to come out, but you know within you that you're not in right standing with God. You're battling with secret sins. You, maybe you're like Jacob. You had an encounter before. Well, you lost it. You can't find your way back. God is calling you today. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. He wants to have a fellowship with you. He wants to have a love affair with you. God is waiting for you. He wants to change your destiny because he sees that you are not this is Zoe that you're looking at now. That's not what I planned for you to be. Why are you running away? That's not what I planned for you to be. I have something bigger for you. God is calling you. If you have lost your touch with God, you are fighting every day with rising and falling, with coldness. With lukewarmness, today you are hot, tomorrow you are cold. God says, I would prefer that you are either hot or cold, not in between. I just want you to pray to God wherever you are. Say, God, this is me. I have come that you will touch me. That you will touch me. all to Jesus. Let him wash your heart. It's not too late to come back. I tell you, it's not too late to come back. There's nothing out there. There is absolutely nothing out there. I surrender all. Come back to him. He's waiting. He's patiently waiting for you. There's mercy. There's mercy. There's mercy for you. There's mercy for you. No matter how far, no matter how deep you have gone, there's mercy waiting for you. Come back. Dear Lord, I commit these ones that have rededicated their lives to you, Lord. I pray and ask that you will have mercy on them and restore them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, we just want to pray. If we can all stand to our feet, we want to pray. Today, the heavens are opened upon us.
I want you to go before God. I want you to go before God and ask for an encounter in your spiritual life, in any area of your life that you need a touch. I want you to go before God and ask that God, I have come, I have obeyed, I have come to Bethel. I don't want to leave here the same way I came. If I were you, I will open my mouth and cry out to God. Open the floodgates in abundance and cause your rain to fall on us. Open the floodgates in abundance and cause your rain to fall on us. Open the floodgates in the God, dear God, dear God, oh, cause your rain, cause your rain to fall on us. Open the floodgate in the border and cause your rain and cause your rain. Baba, we are in your presence. We have come to your presence, Lord. Let it rain. Let it rain. Oh, your rain. Let it fall on us. Let it rain. Let it rain. Fall on us. Open the floodgate. In the border, the heavens are opened upon us. The heavens are opened upon us. To fall the heavens are opened upon us. Oh, if I were you, I will use this opportunity and cry out to God for an encounter. I will use this opportunity to cry out to God for an encounter, for a touch, because me, I don't want to leave here the same way I came. I don't want to leave here the same way I came. I don't want to leave here the same way I came. I, I, came. I am tired of my position right now. I need a new level. I need a new level in my spiritual life. I need a new level in my finances. I need a new level in every area of my life. Pray unto God, cry unto God, cry unto God. The heavens are open. The Lord is set. The Lord is set to bless us. The Lord is set to touch our hearts tonight. The Lord is set to oh Jesus. Keep praying unto God. Keep praying unto God. Keep praying. Oh, Jesus. Let she rain upon your way. Let it fall on me. Lord, hear, hear your presence. Oh, let it rain. Oh, your way, let it open the rock in abundance, and cause your way to fall alone. In the bondage 
He's your father. He's your father. Cry out to him. Talk to him. Tell him that place that you need a touch. Tell him that place that you need a change. Talk to him. He's your father. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Yes, he touched us. Oh, he touched us. He touched us. Oh, the joy, the fierce one. Something happened. Something, Something happened. happened. Something has happened. 
Something has happened in our midst. Something has happened in our lives. The Lord is here. The Lord is here touching lives. Yes, it touched us. Oh, it touched us. And oh, the joy. The face must go. Something happened. Something happened. And now, I know he touched me. I made me go. Yes, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. I know for the time the face must go. Oh, something happened. And now I know he touched me. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this touch. We thank you for this touch, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Glory be to your holy name. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. Lord, I pray, may we never lose this touch, Lord. May we never lose this encounter, Lord. May we never lose these blessings, oh God. Oh God, help us to sustain it. Grant us the grace to sustain it. What you have started, grant us the grace to sustain and to continue in it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before we leave today, um, so I remember last um, at young adult service that we had, one of our sisters here, we didn't know what she was going through at that moment. We didn't know that she was being wheeled into the operating room. And we over here by the spirit of God, we were just lifting up praises unto God. Anybody can remember in the basement, we were singing and dancing unto God in advance for what God is about to do. And the theme of that young adult service was the promise. God has promised us no matter what the devil, no matter how the devil tries, he will not prevail. And today, our sister is here to give glory to God. She's there with her testimony. She's there with the promise. Diana. She didn't want to do this, but I just felt that she should share it with the whole church. Praise the Lord. Initially, I didn't want to do this, but you know, Sister Zoe told me I was going to do it. And I'm not just going to summarize today, as I used to do. I'm going to share of God's goodness and his mercy. When I was pregnant, and my initial care was at Frederick, I was told I had five fibroids. I was really scared. I had so many things going through my mind. And they said, due to you know one thing or the other, they would have to transfer me to John Hopkins. I said, okay, I know God is in control. My husband wasn't here. 
you know, I traveled back to Canada and then it was just me. I called him, told him, just said, let's keep praying and believing God will do it. When I got to John Hopkins, it was a different story. They said even the fibers, they were, in, they were not worried about it. They were worried about my kidney. They were worried about my blood pressure. And I kept going every, twice every week to John Hopkins, to and fro, for NST, for blood tests every week, you know, just to make sure everything is going well. And then one day the doctor said, you know what? You can't go, you can't, you can't do 40 weeks. At the seven weeks on dots, we're going to bring this baby out. I'm like, no, I don't want, you know, I don't want to go through C-section. I kept making excuses, doing it, you know, seeing a lot of things. And the next time we went, she was like, have you guys chosen a date yet? We looked at each other and we're like, no. And she said, you have to choose a date right now. So we decided we'll come in for induction because the Irish doctor was like, we will let you try labor first before doing the C-section. I said, okay. Then we chose October 13. We went on Friday, thinking Saturday, because it told us, you know, 18 to 24 hours. Saturday, there was nothing. Sister Esther, Sister Agnes came. You know, they were with me at the hospital, but expecting that something was going to happen. Nothing happened that day. I was in pain. Even after the epidural, they gave me booster shots twice. It wasn't still working. The doctors were worried, but at the same time, they didn't want to scare me. But I know these things. So on Sunday, they said we would have to do a sick session. I said, OK, but epidural hasn't been working. He gave me booster shots twice. You know, I, didn't, I still felt the pain. I was in serious pain. And they said, we're going to try our best. They wheeled me to the OR, and they gave, I was mine. Both hands were, you know, taking one thing or the other. I couldn't even, I couldn't do anything by myself. And they were just about starting. They did a test, a scratch test. I felt it the first time. They gave me another booster shot. They did the second test. I felt it. They gave me another one. And they did the third one. And I was like, I can't feel it. But myself and my husband, we kept singing, kept praising God. And at 1 p.m., 1 or 9 p.m., they brought the baby out. As at that point, I didn't know braces was going up for me. The young adults were downstairs praising God in advance. I believe strongly that it was it was that braces that made it go so well. Because they were scared of bleeding, I didn't bleed that much. The nurse came after, I think, a day or two, and she was like, you're on your feet already? That's impossible. I just want to bless the name of the Lord. And this is the blessing, the promise that God has given me. Iriolua, that is the goodness of God in my life. Praise the name of the Lord. What the enemy meant for evil, 
God has turned it around, turned it around. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around. Oh my goodness. What the enemy, what, what the enemy. Jehovah turned it around. He turned it around. He turned it around. What the enemy for evil. God has turned me around for oh my God. We decree and we declare that the Lord will preserve this child in the name of Jesus. That no the devil will not steal their joy in the mighty name of Jesus. That all that they need for this child, to train up this child in the way of the Lord, that the Lord will provide in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Praise God. One last thing before we go. Um, our pastor is going to come give us a special announcement. Praise God. Let's give let's give a round of applause as he comes up the stage. Praise the Lord. If you experience Beth Bethel here today, can you say a loud hallelujah? If you experience Bethel within your soul, can you shout hallelujah? And it will be permanent in your life in Jesus' name. We've been blessed today. We thank the Lord for the service, how God used our young people to impact us today. And we're trusting that they will go from might to might, from strength to strength in Jesus' name. I want to thank the Lord for everyone that uh, is here, everyone that's joined, first time returning, we pray that we'll see you again, because this is just uh, a glimpse of many more things to come in the future. And uh, we know that uh, even when we come again for special occasions like this, it will just keep blowing up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Like our sister said, there's no better day to make, this such, to make an announcement like this. Actually, there are two announcements, and these are wedding, wedding announcements. Praise the Lord. So what, what, what I'm going to do is I will make one of the announcements today. The second one I'll leave it for next Sunday. So be here, you get the announcement for the second one. Uh, is that okay with everybody? <laughs> everybody say combo. We'll defer the combo to help us Sunday. Uh, two of our brethren have prayed. They've sought the face of God in the area of marriage. And they believe that they are meant for each other. Amen. And by the grace of God, uh, in two about two weeks from now, they will be getting married. And uh, the first person is one of our sisters with us in this church at the regional level. She's an able assistant, an able leader in the person of Sister Salome Mesoma Ogwani. Uh, I believe uh, I believe she's she's on this on Zoom. Can we do we have her on Zoom? Can we show her picture on Zoom? Some of you, perhaps maybe when you see her, that you will know who she is. Um, you should. Is she? Are we able to show her? Okay, about to praise the Lord. She will just uh, say hello to you all. As we speak, she's actually in Lagos. Can somebody shout hallelujah? And uh, Sister Salome, can you just wave at them? Hi. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can see her smiles. You can tell that she's exci excited and very happy. Yeah. And some of you didn't ask who is the other person. <laughs> You all know who the other person is. Amen. Uh, there's no other person but our able brother who is based in Nigeria, in the person of Brother Larry Ojelavi. Brother Larry, can you? 
I'm here. Praise the Lord. Can somebody <laughs> shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord. God is good. Can everybody say, God is good? And all the time, amen. amen. The wedding amen. will be coming up in Lagos, April 6th. Uh, time is 9 a.m. Uh, we understand the short notice. If you're able to make it, that they will be excited. But if you cannot make it, something else can make it, right? Nobody ever gets tired of support. Your dollar can make it. Talk to your neighbor and say your dollar can make it. Because dollar has got wings. Mm. And today is uh, instantaneous. You can support them in cash, in kind. The wedding comes up at, once again April 6th in Lagos, and the time is 9 a.m. And we trust the Lord that the Lord will perfect this union. Yeah. Our sister has waited this long for this special blessing. And this, we know, is the generational blessing for her. The blessings of the Lord will make them rich and add no sorrow in Jesus' name. But the yeah. word of God says, whoever finds the wife finds a good thing and obtains favor. That favor, embodiment of favor, will surround them in Jesus' name. Praise Amen. the Lord. We've come to the end of the service today. We're going to share the grace. <laughs> okay, please pardon me for mentioning that too. I will leave the second one for next Sunday. Can somebody give God praise? Can somebody give God praise? Actually, there are many of them lined up for this year. Many lined up for this year. So it's just going to be coming uh, discreetly in batches. Praise the Lord. Have you been blessed today? It's such a good way to end the service. And I know the young adults have good, good things laid out for us. Young uh, people don't leave, I'm sure. And uh, today is really their day, but I told them I had to just, you know, jump in and just make this quick announcement because of the proximity of the wedding day. Ordinarily, you will not see me today. I just want to be there and just soaking the word and soaking God's presence. So I'm going to invite Sir Zoe again to come up or the moderator to come up and come and end the young adult service for today. Uh, come up. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Yes. Jump those hands for Jesus. Come on, come on. Young adult, jump those hands for Jesus. Are you happy? Are you glad you're in church today? What a way to end the service. We'll take the grace. Come to your neighbor as you always do. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. With a smile, with a smile. If the person is not smiling, please find somebody else. Surely, find another person, another partner. Surely, surely, goodness and mercies shall follow you and your household all the days of your life. And me and you shall dwell in Bethel all the days of our life, forever and ever. Somebody say, amen. God bless. Please, young adults, let's just come together. Thank you.
short leg, I command the short leg to grow out in Jesus' name. Short hand, grow out in Jesus' name. With that hand, with that leg, receive strength now. Come alive in Jesus' name. And those who are paralyzed in any way, that stroke in your body, I command strength will come to you. Power will come to you. The power of the king graces you up now. Rise up in Jesus' name. Those deaf ears, I command it to be open. Deaf ears be open. And begin to hear in Jesus' name. Dumb tongues be loose right now. And begin to speak out. Speak out. Speak out. In Jesus' name. Those blind eyes, I command you to be open. Receive your sight. Dim eyes, receive your sight. Cataract, get out. Glaucoma, get out. Open those eyes and see in Jesus' name. Lord, any miracle your people need, touch them with power. Sweep away all the works of the devil. Break every chain. Destroy every yoke. Set your people free. Confirm it, O oh Lord. To my right, confirm it. To my left, confirm it. Far at the back, confirm it. There in the middle, confirm it. Over here in the front, confirm it. And everywhere you are hearing the sound of my voice. The miracle is confirmed in Jesus' name. You are healed. You are delivered. You are free. You'll do what you are not able to do before. Lord, confirm it in every life. Thank you because I know it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. You want to close your eyes for prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, we glorify you tonight. When we see you today, we see miracles. We touch you today, we touch miracles. We pray to you today, we possess miracles. Something great, something marvelous happening to everyone. Come from each and every life in Jesus' name. Lord, the faith that works, the faith that comes alive, the faith that cannot fail, the faith that drives in a miracle, express way to miracle, no hold up, no traffic jam, today, 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 let that miracle come upon every soul in Jesus' name, confirm your power in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Sooner can give me a greater amen. God bless you. Wonderful. The word of God upon your life tonight. Ah, you, you lost an amen over there. I'm looking at Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm reading to you from verse 4. You know, when you look at Hebrews chapter 11. And as you open it from verse 1. It says, now face. That's what now. That tells us at this time, on this day, and for you over there, faith is going to work in your life. There are some things that come and go. There are some things you saw last time. You don't see them today. There are some things old people spoke about. And your people don't speak about you today. Some things old men spoke about. The patriarchs of old. The people of old. The prophets of old. 
prophets of old and the people that had problems in the past there were things they spoke about we don't talk about them anymore but there is something peculiar about faith it was at that time and it is at, that, at this time and it will be there tomorrow that's why it says now faith and then it says faith is it is not was it used to be and it is no more it says now faith and today faith will come in your heart because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and when that faith arrives somebody there that faith will arrive somebody there that faith will come and somebody there the faith will pierce your life it will come in your soul it will come in your mind it will come in your spirit and when that faith arrives something you never saw before something you never experienced before it will happen tonight somebody there said it will happen tonight because faith is it is the substance of things hoped for and it is the evidence of things not seen and it's the faith I'm talking about tonight come to verse 4 now by faith Abel that's enough. By faith, Abel. He's selling us whatever Abel became. And whatever you are going to become, it's going to be by faith. Not by unbelief. Not by doubt. Not by crying. Not by rolling on the ground. By faith, Abel. And by you tonight, Abel, you are going to have faith. And that that faith will work in a dynamic way in your life. And then it comes, it goes on and on and on and on. And it comes to verse 39. And it says, all these having obtained a good report through faith. It's coming from the very beginning. And he talks about faith. And it comes to the very end. And it says everyone. And anyone. The problems are going to be solved. If the power is going to come. If the sickness is going to be healed. If miracle is going to come. If salvation is going to come to your soul. If you are going to receive the blessing of heaven, it begins by faith. It goes on by faith. And it ends by faith. I want to talk to you tonight. And after the talk, we will pray. I will pray. You will pray. We will pray. And when my prayer, your prayer, when they come together, there will be an explosion of miracle. I'm talking on the wonders of faith. The wonders of faith. You know, if you're looking for signs and wonders, it's based on faith. If you're looking for the supernatural, it's based on faith. If you're looking for problems to be solved, it's based on faith. If you're waiting for salvation, it's based on faith. If you are waiting for the supernatural encounter, it's based on faith. If you are waiting for the broom of heaven to come and sweep away all the cobweb of the devil in your life, in your family, it's by faith. And it says, by faith, 
Abel. As we talk about face, face in Christ. As we talk about face, face in the blood of the Lamb. As we talk about face, face in the name of Jesus. The name above every name. The name above your cancer. The name above your tuberculosis. The name above your deafness. The name above your paralysis. The name above the yoke in your life. The name above the problem in your life. Every curse is cancelled tonight from your life. Face in the name of Jesus, the name that works wonders, the name that saves, the name that heals, and the faith that delivers, and the faith that sets you free. Face in Christ, face in his blood, face in his name, we look up to him, we see Christ is central. Look up here. And you look at Christ standing here. This one, this side, they're looking towards Christ. And those who on this side, they're looking directly at Christ. And those who on this side, they're looking in this direction with Christ. What does that mean? What it means is this. Christ came before he came, the people who are over here, like Abel, like Abraham, like Sarah, like Joseph, like Caleb, like Joshua, they were looking at this side, looking at the Christ who is to come. How did they know he was coming? Because God said, the siege of the woman. Referring to Christ will bruise the head of the devil. And so over here, from generation, it was a child is born. It was a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He will be called Emmanuel. Emmanuel. That's all these people here looking to be. him here. And then he came. He was born in Bethlehem. He came. He was raised in Nazareth. He came. He went throughout Galilee. He came. And he went to Capernaum. And the people that were living at the time when he came, they were looking at him directly. Those people over there, before Christ came, expectation. They were expecting. And they were looking at him afar off. At the time when he came, they saw him face to face. They touched him. He touched them. He opened their blind eyes. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He forgave their sins experience. Those other people here before Christ came they looked up to him in expectation. The people that lived at the time he came they had experience. He died. He was buried. He rose again. He went to heaven. Before he went to heaven, he says, I give my name unto you. Now whatsoever you ask in that name or you ask the Father he will do it for you. Now he is gone. We are the people on this side. We turn around and we are looking at him now. 
What do we look for? Remember the people who on this side yesterday. Expectation. The people who were directly when he came to the world. Today. That's experience. And the people that on this side were living after he has died. And were living after he was buried. We're living after he rose from the dead. We're living after he went to heaven. We live on his name. We live on his power. We live on his authority. But we're looking from this side and looking at him because he died 2,000 years ago. Exploits. Exploits. Now we're going to have exploits today. Expectation from that side. Experience from this side. Exploits from the other side. That's why the Bible says in, a, in a Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday. Those people. Today. These people and, and tomorrow is forever the same. And what you did before is going to you be in your life today. You are in for a miracle. There's no way you can escape miracles tonight. Miracle coming your way. Miracle coming to your side. Because we're talking about the wonders of Faith. I'm going to divide the message to three parts. Number one, the redemptive faith of Abel. The redemptive faith of Abel. Number two, the restorative faith of all others. The restorative faith of all others. You are there. Restoration has come. You are there. The peace of God has come. Whatever you have lost. And you are wondering. Look at my life. Look at the sorrow. Look at the problem. Joy has come. I said joy has come. What is the person I'm talking about and, there? And you will rejoice tonight. The restorative face of all others. Number three, the regenerative face of Zacchaeus. From Abel to Zacchaeus. Number one, we're looking at the redemptive phase of Abel. I'm reading to you once again from Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts and by each he being dead yet speaketh. Now you remember Adam and Eve. You remember God created them. Adam did not have a father or a mother as lay here. Eve did not have father, mother on the earth over here. They were not born like you were born. They didn't arrive into the world like you arrived in the world. But all the other people that came into the world, everybody that arrived in the world was born of a woman. Cain was born of a woman. Abel was born born of a woman. There is something peculiar about anybody that is born of a woman. Abel, Abel Cain, Cain, yourself, myself, everybody in the world, the white, the black, the brown, Africans, Asians, Americans, 
everybody except Adam and Eve Adam peculiarity of anyone that is born of a woman we're looking at Psalm 51 as you look at Psalm 51 I'm reading at verse 5 it says in this Psalm 51 verse 5 behold I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me you think a fable you think about yourself I was shapen in iniquity and Eve at folly Adam and Eve at sin. Adam and Eve at disobeyed God. Adam and Eve came out of the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve, Eden. Eve, Eden. Eve, 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 Eve were excommunicated out of the Garden of Eden. It was in exile. Outside the Garden. That Cain was born. That Abel was born. Outside the Garden of Eden. That's where you are. Born. At the cause of that peculiarity, it says, I was shaped in iniquity. And the sin did my mother conceive me. In Psalm 58, verse 3. Psalm 58, verse 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born. Speaking lies. It's telling us that when you arrive in this world, and when Abel arrived in this world, he arrived with something in the heart. He arrived with sin in the heart. Have you noticed that little girl? Have you noticed that little boy? Nobody teaches anybody how to tell a lie. Nobody teaches how to pretend. Nobody teaches how to be hypocritical. There is no cause of studies for disobedience. They go astray as soon as they are born. As soon as Abel was born, as soon as you were born, you went astray. And you say he came from the womb. And you are telling lies. Look at Isaiah chapter 48. I'm reading here from verse 8. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 8. Yea, thou hadest not, yea, thou knewest not, yea, from the time that thine ears was not open, for I knew that thou wouldest deal very treacherously and was called a transgressor from the womb. Loto, he walk up bar. Loto, he walk up man. Loto, let him bar. No, eti rekosi ni tori ti mi mope. He won who are the reke gidi gidi. From the womb, he was called a transgressor. Nobody can say, this is how I am. I am all right. Uh -uh. You are not all right. From the womb, you are a liar. From the womb, you are a sinner. You were born in sin. You were born in evil. And it says, your name was transgressor. Transgressor also, from the womb. Also, so that's, so what, that's what, what happened to Abel. Abel and Abel began to realize. I need something because I feel guilty. I feel condemned. Since I was born, there is something in me that is going the wrong direction. And because of that, something must happen. In his own strength, he couldn't do it. In your own strength, you cannot do it. Religion cannot do it. Five self-discipline cannot do it. Going to drink River Jordan cannot do it. Do it. And going to Jerusalem cannot do it. And going to a particular denomination cannot 
candle cannot do it. A burning incense cannot do it. And giving money to the beggars cannot do it. Could my tears forever flow. And my seal no respite no. All this for sin cannot atone. Thou and thou alone must say. He needed redemption. All that he tried. He couldn't make it. Because nobody can make it. Everybody is guilty. Everybody is condemned. Anyone that is born of a woman. Arrived into this world. In sin. Look at Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14. From verse 4. Job chapter 14 verse 4. Who can bring a clean sin out of an unclean not one? Adam had sinned. Adam he was unclean. He had sinned. She was unclean. Uncleanness met with uncleanness. The guilty man met with the guilty woman. The sinful man met with the sinful woman. And there came Cain. And there came Abel. Who can bring a clean sin out of an unclean? Not one. Abel felt the guilt. He felt the condemnation. He felt the uncleanness. He said, what can wash my sin away? What can take my guilt away? What can take my condemnation away? If this condemnation remains there, where will I spend eternity? That's when he remembered what he had heard. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God, that God had killed an animal, waiting for the time when the great lamp of God will come, and God had closed them with the skin of the animal, that's why he brought the sacrifice, he said this will be my sacrifice, this will will be my sin bearer. See, this will be my substitute. This will be my savior. Savior from the guilt. Savior from the condemnation. He was looking forward. Expectation. He was looking forward to the time when the seed of the woman shall come. And he will bruise the head of the devil. Today, Jesus has come for you. Somebody there said, Jesus has come for you. You were born of a woman. Am I right? I said you were born of a woman. Are you born of an angel? Anybody there? Born of a woman. Are you there? What are you? Uh -huh. That's why you are a sinner. That's why you are a liar. That's why you are a transgressor. It's the nature. It's the nature. It's the heart. It's what you came to the world with. But thank God Jesus has come. Thank God Savior has come. Thank God Redeemer has come. Thank God your sacrifice has come. Thank God your sin bearer has come. Thank God your substitute has come. Tonight, the door of salvation is open to you. That's why I said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Anybody coming to the Father, they will come by me. He says, I am I'm the door. And the door is open tonight. The door of mercy is open to you tonight. And the door of salvation is open to you tonight. And the door of the salvation redemption of the Lord is open to you tonight. And so he offered that sacrifice. He was looking forward. There was somebody 
He was right at that time. Oh, what? Now, Coco, yeah, oh. Yesterday, Lano. that's Abel. Oh, yeah, today, Loni. look at the man on the cross. Eh, walk, oh, yeah, Lordy, Just today, Loni. this one is not yesterday. Eh, yes, I know. This one is not tomorrow. Eh, yes, I know. Today, Loni. he was dying on the cross. Oh, cool, Lordy, I he felt guilty. Oh, I need that. He no felt care. condemned. Oh, I need that. If I will die. Oh, no, no, if I die today, Loni. where will I be? The sin I've been carrying since I was born. I've been a transgressor since I was born. And here I'm going to die today. All of a sudden, look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. He's dying for you. He's a sacrifice. He's a substitute. He's a sin bearer. He is your savior. He looked at him. Not like Abel looking from afar. Far. Not like Abel looking from yesterday. Today. And so he prayed. God will answer your prayer today. Somebody there said, God will answer your prayer today. He said, Lord. He called him Lord. He called him Savior. He called him Master. He said, You are my king. He said, You are my Lord. He said, Lord. Remember me when you get your kingdom. And Jesus said. Jesus sit down. And Jesus said. Jesus sit down. The first word he mentioned. He said today. Everybody shouts today. Today. Thou shall be with me in paradise. He got an experience. Yesterday. Abel was looking up to the seed of the woman to come. And he was with expectations. And the Lord made him righteous. And the Lord forgave him. The seed from the cross. Today, you won't be with me in paradise. He had an experience. Here we are today. You're not on the cross now to die. But I've told you the story. You've read the story yourself. And it's about Jesus that came. About Jesus that died. And we're looking at him from this place now to the other side. You know the other people? They uh -huh. lived in B.C. That is before Christ, before Christ, B.C. And when we write their date, they say, we write the date and say B.C. They were looking this direction with expectation. And today, when we write our date, it's now A.D. It's Latin, but the English meaning is after his death. And after he has died for us, now we're AD. I we're looking this direction. I look and I see Jesus tonight. Somebody there, I look and see Jesus tonight. Somebody there, I look and see your Savior tonight. Somebody there, I look and see your Redeemer tonight. Somebody there, I see your Healer tonight. AD, after his death, now that we look at him, that death will work for you today. And the same redemption that Abel had, you will have it in Jesus' name. Make the sacrifice by faith. You hold on to Christ, our Savior. By faith, you hold on to Christ, our Redeemer. By faith, and your faith will bring that redemption tonight in Jesus' name. Point number two. Point number two. It's the restorative phase of all others. 
Thus you both go away in you sought me of all others. Have you, have you read the Hebrews chapter 11? So the Kaibe Ruri Kokan lie by face. Abraham. Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. Those things would be not as though they were. There was no child. And yet God promised him. And he said, By this time next year, you'll have a child. It was an impossible situation. Because Abraham was old. And Sarah was old. But he looked not at things that are seen. But he looked at things that were not seen. And by faith, Abraham. Actually, as you have that faith of Abraham, and you can't do this would be not as though they were. The giving would be not as though they were. The deliverance would be not as though they were. The good children that be not as though they were. The breakthrough that be not as though they were. You will carry miracle home. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus was a blind man. He could not see. But he saw people that were going. He had people that were going. And he said, what's that? What's that? He said, it's Jesus. But he just began to cry out. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And he stopped. Your prayer will stop Jesus tonight. Your prayer will arrest the, time, the power of Jesus tonight. What do you want me to do unto you? That my eyes may be opened. And he said, receive. And the eyes were opened. Blind man, your eyes will open tonight. Let people, your lameness will vanish away tonight. He got it. Abraham Bartimaeus, he got it. Have you heard of Caleb? When all the other people said, we cannot go on. We cannot go to the land of promise. Oh, Caleb said, we can. But God on our side. The possibilities will be possible. But God on our side. All those giants against your life. The giants that come in the day. The giants that come in the night. Tonight you will conquer. Tonight you have conquered. By faith, Caleb. He had a different spirit. He had a different heart. When they said they cannot, he said, I can. Somebody there, I can. Somebody there, I can. I can do all things. Somebody there, I can. I can do all things. Through Christ that strengthens me. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Bartimaeus. By faith, Caleb. By faith, Virgin Mary. Look at what the angel said. With God, all things are possible. And Mary said, Be it unto me according to thy word. And when she met Elizabeth, Elizabeth told her, Blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those that are told him from the Lord. There's a performance in your life tonight. A performance of salvation. A performance of healing. A performance of deliverance. Do you remember the widow of Zarephat? Can you give me some water to drink? Elijah said. I want you to He said, I'm bringing most of bread in your hand. And the widow said, Man of God, prophet, I don't have anything like that. I'm cooking the last meal so that I eat and die. And the man of God said, You will not die. And the man of God tells you tonight, You will not die. And the man of God tells you tonight, It will multiply your cruise of oil and meal. He said, well, do it for me first. And he did it, she did it for him. And then that cruise of oil did not fail. She went through all the time of famine. The young men and the young women. 
my, my the, the prophet said behold my children young men and women young boys and girls young sons and daughters for signs and wonders in Israel you are for signs and wonders I said you are for signs and wonders now we come to zero Babel and it's in Zechariah chapter 4 we're looking at Zechariah chapter 4. And I'm reading here from verse 6. Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel. Look at this in chapter 4, verse 6 of Zechariah. It says, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plague. Your mountains are moving tonight. The wonders of faith. Come Abel. The wonders of faith. And all the other people we have talked about now, the wonders of faith will take every mountain away from your life. Point number three, before we begin to roll the mountains away. The regenerative faith of Zacchaeus. The story, I'm, I'm sure you have heard this before. It's in Luke chapter 19. And it is from verse 1 to verse 10. And you know the story. Jesus was passing through Jericho. Zacchaeus said, he will not pass me by. Tonight, I will see him. Tonight, I will touch him. Tonight, I will behold him. Tonight, Tonight, I'm going to get something from him. Somebody there. Are you there? I will get something. I said I will get something. The people are tired. I can't hear them. I can't see them. I can't see their hand. Something will happen to you. Look at the Zacchaeus I'm talking about. He was a sinner. He was a known sinner. He was a notorious sinner. He was a fraudulent sinner. Everybody knew. Don't worry what they know about you. Jesus will forgive you tonight. He sought the Lord. He earnestly sought the Lord. He sought the Lord with determination. When he could not get to Jesus, he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree. He was waiting there. I will see him. With all his concentration, he was looking in that direction. And eventually, Jesus came there. And Jesus looked at him. And he mentioned his name. He said, Zacchaeus, make haste. Come down. For today, I must abide in your house. He was a rich man. But he, he knew that money could not buy peace of mind. Money could not buy pardon from God. Money could not buy purity of heart. Money could not buy a place in heaven. That's why he said Jesus is the way. Jesus is the only one. He was criticized. He oh, was oh. called names. He was ridiculed. Ab but nothing stopped him from getting saved. Nothing will stop you tonight. I said nothing will stop you tonight. And then he repented of his sin. He said, Jesus, I have been fraudulent. I have been stingy. And for my goods I give to the poor. If I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Said this day today, Jesus, see that we can the salvation you. come to your house. He you believed the Lord, you he Lord. received the Savior. Christ went home with him. 
Jesus tell it lost it. So that he could go home with Christ in heaven. Pi o nko le ba Jesus lost it or no? He received Christ. O ba Jesus. Christ received it. Jesus tell what ba? He accepted Christ. O tell what ba Jesus? Christ accepted it. Jesus no tell what ba? And Christ went to Zacchaeus to Zacchaeus' house. Jesus si lost it le Zacchaeu. So that Zacchaeus will go with Christ to his heavenly house. He if you don't take him home, he'll not take you home. If you don't have him in your heart, he'll not take you to heaven. If you take him home so he can take you to his home. And he says, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I receive you unto myself. So that where I am, there you will be also. Let him forgive your sin. Let him take your guilt away. Let him save your soul. Say, Jesus, here I am. I want you to be my savior. And then when life is ended, it will take you to heaven. The Lord is going to give you the chance right now. There are blessings today every, everybody will receive. Salvation is coming. Healing is coming. He was on board. Deliverance is coming. Breaking of yoke is coming. Every blessing you need. That's why we look through all those people. By faith. By faith. Your own time has come. Your name now will come to the record. Your name will come into the record. It's bad and ice 